function can be viewed as a piecewise function. And you'll need to know this for, a limit, for evaluating your limits without a calculator. And as I mentioned, when you move on to derivatives, you'll need this concept as well. So first of all, let's just start with the basic absolute value function, the absolute value of x. Now, I've been preaching this, and I'm going to continue preaching it. This, this toolbox of functions, you should have a mental picture of what these functions look like. When you see their equations, uh, a picture should pop into your head. It, it really, really should. Um, and if I need to, I will find a sheet that has these functions on it. Um, so if you kind of study an absolute value, you can talk about it, cubic, square root, trig, all those things, I'll get you one of those um, so that you can build that toolbox in addition to these domains. Because um, I am expecting you to know what this looks like, what these look like. Okay? Now, the absolute value of x. That's the easy one, okay? It's uh, vertex is at the origin. It's just a V, okay? It'd be great if I could draw perfectly straight lines, but only on a good day. All right, so if we look at this as a piecewise function, there's a left half and there's a right half, okay? So this function, absolute value of X, can be expressed as, on the left side, that's just the line negative x. Slope of negative 1 goes through the origin. So when x is less than 0, it's negative x. When x is greater than or equal to 0, then it is positive x. Now, very rarely are they actually going to ask you about the absolute value of just plain x. But problem number 11 did. Problem number 11 was the absolute value of x over x, and it asked you for the limit as it approached 0 from the left. So from the left, the left side is negative x. So negative x over positive x reduces to negative 1. That's why that limit is negative 1. Problem number 11. Asking the limit as we approach zero from the right, the limit of positive one. Because from the right, absolute value of x is just x, so x over x reduces to positive one. Okay, so what if they ask us a little bit more involved the absolute value of 6x minus 3? We're going to go through the steps of uh, writing this as a piecewise function. First thing that I do is I determine, well, where is my function going to change? What's the number that goes with my inequality? And that number is the x value of your vertex. So you take what's inside of the absolute value, set it equal to 0, and solve for x. So in this case, our changing point, whatever you want to call it, is 1 half. So I always do the less than first. I like to move from left to right, so I do less than and then the greater than. It doesn't matter which one gets the equal to, just so one of them does. Now, for the less than, what you do is you put a negative in front of your absolute value and you're going to distribute it. Now, on this one, it's pretty simple because it's just going to change your signs. So that's negative 6x plus 3 for the left side. For the right side, then you just drop the absolute value bars. And then you can use that to evaluate some one-sided limits um, and everything. I even put a thing on here for me to graph. So if this is 1, then our vertex is at 1 half. Pretty steep. That's a slope of negative 6. And positive 6 so that absolute value function looks something like that the left side has a negative slope the right side has a positive slope now I didn't put an example like this on here but be careful and let me go ahead and 
ahead and just kind of add one to the end here. If there is a negative in front of your absolute value function, so say for example, we've got a third one, h of x is, I'm going to throw a little bit of everything in here, um, 2x plus 6 minus 1, okay? Let's put a really complex absolute value on here. That's the x coordinate of the vertex. absolute value function. Um, it's got a coefficient up front, it's a negative coefficient up front, it's got a number added to the x, and it has a number added to the end of the absolute value. So if we are writing this as a piecewise function, I'm going to kind of do some work over to the sides um, before I put it into my absolute value. Okay, so first of all, I've got to locate the vertex. So in this case, it's going to be negative three. Um, now I know y'all are in the habit of showing a lot of steps, which is good and bad, okay? It's good because hopefully it prevents you from making careless mistakes. It's bad because it takes a lot of time to write minus six, minus six, and then two x is equal to negative six, and divide by two, divide by two, and x is equal to negative three. Solving a simple equation like this, you really should be able to do it Really, you should be able to do it in one step, but if you can minimize it to two steps like this and not have all the work shown in there, you're going to save yourself precious time on the exam. So that's a total side note. All right, so uh, my inequality is, or my piecewise function is changing at negative 3. My x coordinate of my vertex is negative 3. All right, so I said for the less than, you change the sign of what's in front of the absolute value. So this time it started as negative. So I'm going to change that negative 2 to a positive 2. You don't change anything else. Okay, You only change the sign of what's in front of the absolute value, and then you simplify. So we've got 4x plus 12 minus 1. So that left side is going to look like the function 4x plus 12. 11. For the greater than, for the second one, you keep everything the same. You just drop the absolute value bars. They become parentheses and you simplify. So negative 4x minus 12 minus 1. So the right side is negative 4x minus 13. For the absolute value functions, you're always going to have the same slope. They just have opposite signs y-intercept part is going to differ. So, Courtney asked about graphing uh, piecewise functions just in general, so I'm not going to graph this with the knowledge that I have about absolute value functions. I'm going to graph it from just scratch. If this were just some absolute, or not absolute value, some piecewise function, I'm going to graph it from that perspective. And it's really funny that I'm doing this right now with pre-calc. Um, so negative 3 is my changing point. For the sake of helping myself and helping you guys right now, this does not actually exist on the graph, but I'm going to put a vertical dotted line right there at negative 3. To help myself visualize that to the left of this line, I'm going to have 4x plus 11. To the right of this line, my function is going to look like negative 4x minus 13. So what I would do is I'm going to plug negative 3 into both pieces. Now I know that technically I'm not supposed to plug it into the first one because it's not equal to 3, but I want to know where would that point be. At x equals negative 3, where would the point be if it were defined? So I'm going to plug negative 3 into my first function. 
4 times negative 3 plus 11 gives me negative 12 plus 11, which is negative 1. So I'm going to put an open circle at negative 3, negative 1. And I'll put an open circle there because um, it's not equal to, but that's where it would be if it were. Then I'm going to plug negative 3 into the other piece. Ah, negative 4 times negative 3 minus 13 gives me positive 12 minus 13. And guess what? It gives me the same value. So I'm going to fill in that open circle that I just made because it gave me the exact same y value. And for absolute value functions, it should. If it's a continuous piecewise function, it will give you the same y value. If it's not continuous, then it's not going to give you the same y value. I would have plotted that point somewhere else. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do as far as filling in the rest of this graph. You can either, if you're more of a visual graphical kind of person, I just, I like to use the slope. Okay, the left side has a slope of positive four. So I need this right side, I need a slope, or excuse me, left side. Okay. Left side, I have a slope of positive four. So from that point, I'm going to go down four and left one. Because I'm having to go to the left, I need to make both of them negative for it to be positive. Okay. If you don't like using the slope, then pick an x value to the left of negative 3. For example, negative 4. Plug it in. Find the y value. And plot it. Okay. Put me in the exact same place. Negative 4, negative 5. Okay. Do the same thing for the right side. Using the slope, I would go down 4 and right 1 because it's a negative 4 slope. Or I would plug in negative 2. Or I could plug in 0. Or I could plug in any point to the right of negative 3. And I would end up with the same conclusion. 8 minus 13 is negative 5. in piecewise functions.